Welcome to the Barbarian Hour podcast, where we conquer the impossible. The Barbarian Hour podcast is presented by Barbarian Apparel. Here is Jared Opfer and Zeb Miller. Are you ready? Hello, wrestlers and coaches. I'm Teague Moore. I spent 20 years coaching at the Division I level in the NCAA, 15 of those years as a head coach. During that time, I helped a lot of wrestlers and parents navigate the recruiting process. I've now opened my own consulting business to do just that, to help you navigate the recruiting process. There's a lot of unanswered questions. How do scholarships work? What program would be right for my son? Or better yet, what coach would be right for my wrestler? I can help answer these and many other questions. Feel free to email me or call me at the information listed below, and we can set up your first consultation today. I look forward to working with you and helping you make the right choice. All right, so we've got the Barbarian Hour. It is Iron Man Week, and we're going to have U.S. Olympian Andy Rovett on, 2008 U.S. Olympian, three-time All-American for the University of Michigan. How many time national team member for Team USA? Uh, four time. Four time, and you were the number one three? Twice. Twice. Uh, yeah. 07, 08. No, 06, 08. 06, 08. 07, 09, I was second. 07, 09, you were second. And then you were third, though, too, weren't you? No. You, yeah, you were at 96 kilos, weren't you third? No, no, I was, I was second at 96. Oh, oh I was second? third, but that year, uh, Barner sat out. That was the year I had um, staph infection, and uh, I – hurt my ankle and when I lost in the semis to Cummins I came back I was third in the mini tournament but because I lost in the semis I ended up being fourth place gotcha okay so 96 kilos what's the what's that translate into in pounds for let's let's, let's break this 211 but I was, second nowhere, at, I, was, I was second at 96 kilos the year before you are you are nowhere near 96 kilos right now no, I weighed like even then I only weighed I didn't weigh that much. What did you weigh like 205, 200? Yeah, 200, 205. That's, I just that's didn't amazing. want to cut 15 pounds anymore. I was like I that, that, the year that the year that I got staph infection, I got sick in Vegas and like I was trying to so it, the, the year after the Olympics, 09, I took second to Varner at the trials at 96 and that year I was a little heavier um but then the following year, I was so disciplined with my weight. I got that. I was so light. And uh, the night before, I had an omelet with um, spinach and tomatoes. And any one of those three could have given me like salmonella or food poisoning. And I was vomiting for like 24, 48 hours. I couldn't, leave, I couldn't hold anything down. And after the, after the open, I was winning. I was beating Travis Pasco, I think, 8-0. And then he ended up like coming back tying it and then pinning me and I was just like I'm done I had no energy I hadn't had food in like 24 hours um or more and uh and so I was like I'm done I went up a weight class and I was like I'm just going to enjoy this yeah, you were pretty competitive obviously 96 kilos very undersized um obviously if you're losing to Varner he's pretty good <laughs> he's really yeah, good he's it was close. I mean, the year before, I beat him at 84 at the Olympic trials in the finals, the Olympic, the mini tournament. But then when he started growing, because he was so tall, when he started growing, like, I kept getting him on the edge. And, like, I was, like, millimeters from scoring. He ended up just being too big for Dude, me. It's a horse. He's a monster. Yeah, he took their – Have, have you ever seen Jake Varner's sisters? Yeah. The one's a bodybuilder, I think. She's She is – I mean, dude, they are, like – viking genetics or something they're like massive big people that guy at 84 kilos that's a nightmare for me to think about yeah he was young i mean he was like oh, a, he was a 184 pounder too yeah he was a junior in college that year i think oh, he's massive up. dude the guy is a he's a huge guy yeah and i was in london were you in london andy for, was for, so he like caught he caught like the most perfect Olympic tournament that I've ever seen, man. Um, they had uh, Yazdani, big Yazdani had Gadisov first round. Great. No, no, one of them had a pigtail. One of them, because there's 17 people in the Olympics back then. And it must and have been Gadisov then. 
because then that. then uh, Yazdani beat Gadisov, but he blew his knee out in the process. Yeah, and then he lost in that bull. And he lost, and he was done because then Varner beat that guy. Yeah. Dude, it was crazy. And then he, he just, like, he caught lightning in a bottle, man. But you know what? When you're someone like that, and I mean, that's what it's all about, right? Like, you, you got to live in that moment, and you got to find a way, and Jake Varner did that, man. And I, I was always just super impressed with how ginormous the guy is. He's obviously a humble guy. And yeah, he's I got two, I think he's got two world bronze, too. Yeah, two, two in the worlds, yeah. So, and Before, I think both yeah. of those bronzes, I think that – Big guys, Donnie was the champ for one of them, and then I want to say that uh, gets God Solomon was the champ. Yeah, oh nine. Yeah, how about Gatsalov? which is crazy? By the way, people don't talk about God Solomon enough, man. Do you want to know how he won it? He run. He's he's from Body Cop Cos, which is Christian mostly. He's he's a Muslim from uh, Osetia. He won it during Ramadan. While not eating and drinking anything from sunrise to sundown, the tournament was one day. As a one-day world championship, he didn't put one thing in between matches into his mouth. He's a freak. You know he went up to 125 kilos, and it might have been 130. I think it was 125. He's won the world championships at heavyweight. Yeah, I was there for that. That He won it, I think. He's unreal. Was it 125 or 130? I, I think it was 120. 120 uh, I think it was 20, 125. Yeah, 264, right? Yeah, he, but he was he's tiny. Not, he's, he's the biggest that guy probably gets is 230, would be my gosh, right? Oh, that's, yeah, big. The, by probably only two, he probably wanted that 220. And is he, he our is, age, Andy? Is he like 41, 42? Yeah, it's probably somewhere around there. But he, yeah, yeah he, I mean, you look at him right now, he's been with Kyle Snyder, um, you know, in Moscow and Dagestan, and you see him, he's, he's little, like he's he not. Looks, yeah, no, he's not. Only 210, 215, 215 pounds. It's pretty he amazing. Won it. He won it when Kennedy was at the world championships in Uzbekistan. Tashkent, 2014? Yeah. Okay. So just real quick, you know, it is Ironman week. We're going to come back and talk. We're, I'm going to let you get just down the Russian rabbit hole because you live there. And um, you learn so much, but let's get down the the uh, the Iron Man rabbit hole. We'll get back for the Russian rabbit hole. I, I can't wait. There's going to be several. You know what? I'm supposed to be setting a time limit, but I just got a feeling we're going to go off the rails with that. So I am going to put okay. you on. I am going to put you on for for the the hour that we're supposed to do. But I just got a feeling we're not going to do that. <laughs> How do you feel about that? I'm fine. I don't. I have no rules. Uh, no rules. Okay. Okay. Especially talking with you. Man. <laughs> okay, so first things first. You are from East Cleveland, Ohio. Not not the city of East Cleveland. You are from the east side of Cleveland. That's correct, right? Correct. Okay, how far from St. Edwards were you from uh, in Cleveland? Uh, I mean, we were pretty much right off the highway exit on 156 and Lakeshore. East and, side. Uh, on the east side, 156, okay. East 156 and Lakeshore. And then and, uh, St. Ed's about like 117th? Yeah, in between West West One Seventeenth and West One Hundred Tenth, something like that, probably. Yeah, so right about there. One fifty six plus one hundred seventeen blocks. Okay, gotcha. So, so what would the, what was the drive? How long did it take you? Oh, uh, it's like fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes, and then Greg Urbis actually lived by you, didn't he? Yeah. So, 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 uh, Coach Urbis went to high school with my dad. Grew up in the same neighborhood as my dad, the old Slovenian neighborhood. Wearing my Slovenian wrestling shirt. I love it. I love it. Represent Dave Habit, our guy. Right. And, uh, yeah, so they went to school. And that's why, like, when, when I was supposed to go to Lake Catholic, they said that because my sister was at Lake Catholic, which was equal distance west, east, that St. Ed's was west. Uh, they told me I wasn't going to be able to wrestle on varsity as a freshman. And then I was like, I don't know if I want to go there. And so Greg Urbis. Who told you that? Him, uh, that was Tim Armelli's rule. That was his rule. Freshman out of Tim Armelli is a great guy, but he must have bumped his head. <laughs> Tim Armelli is a really good dude. I like Tim Armelli. It was just his rule, right? Like it's not a against rule. the guy. Tim Armelli just, is is a genius, but he, I finally well, found a chink in that guy's armor. 
Well, think about the think about the era that he probably came in. Freshmen weren't allowed when he was in college. Freshmen weren't even allowed to compete in college, right? That, like that's right. That, and then they weren't allowed to compete in high school, even probably. Probably, yeah. Yeah, you only and got so, three I, years I, when my dad was in high school. Really? Yeah. Same with probably your dad and Urbis. Probably only got three years, but Urbis didn't even wrestle. So yeah, my dad didn't do any sports. I love um, it. What high school did they go to? Your dad and Urbis. They went to St. Joe's. They went to Cleveland, which is VASJ now, right? Yeah, Villanueva, St. Joe's. Which um, how crazy went is COVID, that? I wasn't What's hey, how crazy is that they went to they went to St. Joe, which when it was Cleveland St. Joe, it was all boys when they went there, right? Yeah, as soon as they went co-ed, my dad said, "You're not going there." <sighs> okay, so St. Joe has had some of the all-time great teams in the history of Ohio with the St. John's brothers, right? Yeah, they were really good. They West End Y. So I grew up. So when I was a kid, I started at Euclid Y which was close. And then uh, Euclid Y dropped their wrestling program. And then I went out to uh, West NY and Willoughby with uh, Coach Hunter when he, he had him set, you know, for St. Joe's, uh, Coach Hunter developed the St. John's brothers, uh, his own son, Tony Hunter, um, Bill Spleet, Scott Petch. Um, all three of those guys went to Indiana to wrestle. Um, mm-hmm. St. John's obviously went to uh, ASU. Spleet. Had Kevin Randleman beat in the state finals? Did he really? It's a crazy. We should, that that would be one to watch. That came down to the last second too. Split was really going at him. Split was a St. Joe guy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so St. Edward. You go to St. Edward because late Catholic <laughs> Tim Armelli had a, a crazy rule. Freshman couldn't rest. I we I, listen now. I got to talk to him. Every time I see him, I always try and talk to him. And, um, and I trained with their freshman team as a seventh grader because I, I ended up leaving West NY because I was too big. There wasn't anybody on my side. So then I went to Longwood Y, which was the home of Alan Freed and Mariola and, and a ton of other good guys. Um, you know, Mason Lenhard, Ryan Lang, both Ryan Langs. Um, you know, Longwood was really good. And then I got too big for Longwood at my seventh grade year. I was like 135 pounds, 140 pounds. And so when my sister was a freshman there at Lake Catholic, they were like, yeah, bring Andy up. He could train with the, with the freshman team because they had two rooms. They had freshman in one room and uh, sophomore, junior, senior in another room. And I was like, I'm going to have to wrestle in this room again for a, a second time? But yeah. so it doesn't work out. They, they say, no. So it's St. Ed's. You're on St. Ed's. Your dad went to high school with Greg Urbis. Yeah, so, so I, you know, you want to know when I went to check the school out? Yeah, tell me that story. So, so I was in eighth grade, and, they're like, you know, I, I, I checked Lake Catholic out, and I was like, okay, you know, this is great, but I could see there was a lack of focus, even as an eighth grader, because of the females, right? Like, there, you could only focus on so many things, right? School, females, friendships, sports, family, stuff like that. And so then I go to St. Ed's, and it was definitely way more focused. And so they have, like, little days where you could go around, right? And, you know, my dad had been talking to Urbis about me going there. And at this point, I'm wrestling for St. Justin Martyr, you know, late out out in East Lake. And so I go there and this is, I go there on a Friday and, uh, sorry, maybe a Thursday, Thursday or Friday. And St. Ed's is wrestling Walsh Jesuit that weekend number one team versus number two team in the country. This is 1993. St. Ed's won a national championship in 1992. I think Walsh won it in 91. They're the returning two-time national championship teams. ESPN is there filming practice. <laughs> I'm in this practice working out as, as an eighth grader, and ESPN is filming in the room. And I'm like, I could go to this other school where I came and started as a freshman. <laughs> Well, I'm going to go to this place where, where they're being filmed by ESPN, right? And I was yeah. just like, that's a no-brainer. It's kind of a no-brainer, yeah? Yeah, I went home. I immediately, I was like, I'm going to St. Ed's. And was your dad like, sure? Yeah, absolutely. He I mean, was he in. Was, yeah, your, your old man was in. Um, okay, who, who was your uh, shadow host? Do you remember? Who did you, who did you go around with? That, that I don't remember who I, who I walked around with. I was just hoping it was like Jeremy Orsky. <laughs> no, that would have made my day because I love that guy. Yeah, he's ridiculous. He um, okay, so you get the St. Ed's. Did you start as a freshman? I did, yeah. So I was actually thinking about this recently. This is, uh, this is a crazy, crazy story. So, like, Brad Clement was returning state runner-up. But he 
for the first week was like, I'm going 145. I weighed 146 pounds, right? And I'm just like, I'm not trying to wrestle off Brad Clement at 145. I was like, I'll go 152. I weighed 146 as a freshman, right? A 14-year-old little kid, no facial hair, just baby face. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm wrestling 152. And so Coach Irv, and this was old school St. Ed's, like, they're like, okay, we're going to start wrestle-offs as soon as school gets out. So I had to do, I had to work my way up the ladder. Best two out of three. I was the lowest on the ladder. So I did, I had three wrestle off. I won my first one, I think in two, right? So I wrestled two matches. I won my second wrestle off in three matches. I, I lost a match and I won two. And then I won the next wrestle off in two matches. So I wrestled seven matches. I'm done. I take my hat gear off. They're about to start practice. I'm like, I'm done. I just wrestled seven matches. Irvis goes, get some water, boy. We're about to do live matches. And every day at St. Ed's, we did six, six minute goes. Oh my God. And so I went six more matches. I, in my wrestle off day, I wrestled 13 matches that day. In a two hour practice. In a two hour practice. How'd you feel after that one? I mean, you're, if you're a 14 year old kid, like you don't even have a clue, right? You're just like, yeah, I'll do it again. <laughs> you know, like, I love it. Whatever. And so, so you that had a was, bunch of killers in the room. You had a great team. Yeah. And so that was week one, right? And then Clemen, Clemens decides to go down and, and doesn't tell me, right? Because all the upper class. So at that point in St. Ed's, like, nobody, no freshman had wrestled varsity. And like, since the 80s, it was like, Five Alan Freed freshmen. was probably the last freshman to wrestle. Well, it was, yeah, it was like Alan Freed. It was um, Eddie Jane, right? That was like, yeah, maybe like two or three people. And then Kozicki and I show up and we're starting as freshmen. And people are like, this doesn't happen that we have two freshmen, right? And like totally not normal. And so all the upperclassmen were like not keeping me up to date. And so Tim Hollow dropped from 160 to 152. And then Brad Clemens would drop from 45 to 40. And so I had to wrestle off Tim Hollow. I lost to him. And so that was the week of the Ironman. So my freshman year, I was so bummed. That was the year one of Ironman. And I got bamboozled by the upperclassmen at St. Ed's. And, gotcha. I did, and I didn't even get a chance to wrestle because, like, there was, like, a senior that ended up wrestling 145. But so – I dropped down the following weekend after Ironman. So the only time I never wrestled varsity in high school and college was the year that the Ironman started in 1994. And that was like unreal, man. Like I just remember Eric Guerrero was there, like all these like amazing people. Like I can't think of Mark Bismarck, North Dakota century had a really good team. Yeah. Bismarck and all the Oklahoma teams are super good. And Easton. Easton? Yeah, Easton was amazing. And the Walsh, so Walsh Jesuit team in 94, 95 was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, so you got you got hosed a little bit. But you did eventually get into that lineup as a freshman, didn't you? Yeah, that, I started every other week. So, okay. so I, went, I ended up going down to 145, and uh, I, I started the whole rest of the season. Did you qualify for the state? No. So I lost to – uh, in the districts at Manor, I lost to the state. And on the front side, I lost to um, the Walsh Jesuit kid. I'm going to blank on his name right now. But I lost to the Walsh Jesuit kid who ended up taking second to stay. I lost to him by two points. And I lost to Bill Haney from Strongsville who won the states the next week. And I lost to him by – Rawling. The, Keith Rawling. Keith Rawling, yeah. So I lost to Keith Rawlings by two. I lost to Bill Haney by one. They ended up going to so state. They were in the finals. They were in the finals. And I'm just state sitting finals. Fresh. Man, I'm bummed. Like, I could have wrestled anybody else to qualify, and I had to wrestle those two. But it lighted a fire on my butt, and uh, it really, really pushed me the following year. So you jumped levels then from freshman to sophomore year. You really jumped levels because your sophomore year, you made the state finals, and you want to, I want to say you wrestled Haskett in the state finals. I did, yeah. So what was the difference between the freshman year and the sophomore year, and how did you make that jump? And was that 45 again the yeah, next year? Yeah, I 45 again. So, I mean, like I said, I only weighed 146. 145 as a freshman. Probably by the end of the year, I was underweight. Uh, you know, I never cut weight in high school. And so that – but, I mean, that summer, I've been in the St. Ed's program for a whole year. And, uh, you know, so I got that whole year under my belt. I had the experience of wrestling the state champ, state runner-up. 
having close matches with them. Then I go out to Fargo and well, first I went out to Lincoln, Nebraska, the last year cadet and juniors were separated. And so I'm in Lincoln, Nebraska as a match away in Greco match away in freestyle again, bum me out. Um, and then I, I made the junior Greco team and, you know, I got to train with the junior Greco team at St. Ed's and go out on the bus with them. And, uh, I was a match away again. I lost, to I, I think Isaac Wood or Oscar Wood, one of the two Wood brothers. Oregon, Oregon yeah. dudes. There was like five people left on the side and, uh, I got knocked out by like the, one of the baddest dudes to have a wrestle in Fargo. And so I had all those disappointments, right? <laughs> but I knew I was competitive and I was right there. And so the next year, I just had so much more confidence going into the season. So the coaching staff, when you were on the team, was like Taraki Hada, Jeff Leonard, John Haffernan, uh, Coach uh, Jane, Coach Jane, yep. uh, Greg Urbis. Who else am I missing? Yeah, like Coach Lewandowski. I mean, there was like a whole handful. I mean, even like my early years, like Silvestro was there. Um, yeah, I mean, there was just people. That was just off the top of my head. I know I missed some. Yeah, no, there was, there was definitely more, and I'm not going to be able to think of all of them off the top of my head, but yeah, there, okay. there was a whole bunch of them. So you, you, you make jumps off of basically going to Fargo, going to Nebraska, coming up short in the, in the blood round and all those tournaments. And then you get to St. Ed's as a sophomore. Was Ironman your first varsity tournament as a sophomore? No, I think we always had a, a one quad before Ironman. So Ironman as a sophomore, how'd you do? Ah, oh, man, that's I. I didn't look at that year. I want to. I know I placed. I want to. You did say, place though. Yeah, I did place. I want to say I was like in the third and fourth match or fifth place match. I, I'm probably fifth. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't 100% remember, um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I placed. I know I didn't place in Reno that year. My brother made the finals in uh, the 1995 Ironman. He lost to a dude from Blair named Quinn Foster. Oh, yeah, I remember Quinn. Yeah, my brother lost a one-point match to him in the finals in 90, yeah, 95. So our, Yeah, we'd have been sophomore in high school. Yeah, so my brother made the finals, and then he, like – got really sick that year and he still placed in the state tournament, but he was the defending state champ in, in Ohio in division two, but the iron man. Okay. Let's get into your second. Let's get into your, your second and your third iron man where you're, your junior and senior seasons at St. Edward. Right. I mean, it's yeah. iron man week. It's iron man Eve Eve right now. Right. Yeah. You're actually going to be over at the iron man, right? Yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm in Vermont right now and uh, I'm headed home tomorrow. And uh, I'll, I'll be in tomorrow afternoon. So but, you'll be there. You'll be coaching some kids. Yep. Me and Andy Rovat. That's what I like. I just like you being Andy Rovat. But you're going to be in the same – it is literally the same gym. Right. <laughs> it's the same gym that you wrestled in in 95, 96, and 97. Talk about 97 because you made another big jump in weight, right? Yeah. So I went from uh, – after my sophomore year, I went up to 160. Um, so I went from 145 to 160. Okay. Who did you wrestle at the Ironman and what, how did you do as a junior? Uh, so I, I was like, I, I mean, you, you, you've seen the matches I've been posting. So I, I posted, I just posted seven Ironman matches tomorrow. I'm going to, and tonight we're going to watch one. Um, but, uh, so the first match of my junior year, so the 1996 Ironman, so it's the third year. Um, Walsh Jesuit took a step down that year because um, they, they, they went down the division. They just didn't have as, as much depth uh, that year. They still had really good guys, Heskett, um, you know, Sveda and up, you know, stuff like that. But they went down a little bit that year. Um, and uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. That year they were still really good. Don't, don't get me wrong. Um, so, 96, so my junior, 97, they were really good. But 96 – Marchetti got hurt. Right. Yeah. So they didn't yeah, have Marchetti. Okay. Yeah, right. They went down. They like why you were saying they went down because they had the number one guy in the country and that couldn't wrestle. Right. Yeah. No, that's right. Because I was thinking the, the year yeah. before. So the year yeah. before yeah. was crazy. Like my sophomore year, I had knee surgery two days before the Ed's Walsh match. The gym was packed. And 
number one, number two. We were number two while she was number one. My my sophomore year at St. Ed's, and the only match I wasn't that it, in high school and college, the only match I didn't wrestle weekend was because of an injury. Was that weekend Walsh Jesuit? I, I didn't weigh in. I just sat on the bench, and that was the year that in the third match the official had a heart attack and died on the mat. Died on the mat instantly. His heart blew and, up. And not and not they resuscitated. When we have a happy ending here, you guys got to the third match. An official collapses on the mat. He dies of a massive heart attack. He canceled the duel. You're done. You, you were done. 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 Which, I mean, he was, which is what you should do. Right. I mean, it was it was pandemonium. Like, like I said, like the I like that gym is small, but it was packed to the brim. I'm, I think they had it on closed circuit in the cafeteria. They had a spillover crowd in the calf, and I'm on the bench with crutches, and he the official still made it and he went like this and when he stood up he blew the whistle his heart just boom exploded and he fell back and he was like three and a half four feet away from me and I just see his eyes roll in the back of his head and instantly the coach was like kids in the locker room now and I mean, they, they got it because some yeah. people some wrestling people don't get it sounds like they got it yeah oh yeah they were like we're, we're done they're like this isn't because they tried to assess it, but I mean, the thing, he was stiff as a board instantly. That is and, terrible. Um, and you yeah. were not wrestling in that match because Orski's told me about that. He was the heavyweight for you guys at that point in time. Oh, I was sitting next to him. Yeah, we were at That's the end of the match. Crazy, night. dude. Yeah. Oh, my God. What yeah. a horrible thing. Yeah, that was crazy. And so then, yeah, that next year, uh, Iron Man is our first year back into that gym, you know. And, and obviously, oh, so it, you know, was in the, it was in the Walsh Iron Man, it was in the dome. Yeah, it was in the dome. Wow, oh, so the yeah, guy so died the, on the mat in the dome. Yeah, and then the next time we're in the gym, it's it's we're at Iron Man, right? So, so yeah, like, you're you're up a weight. You're up two weights now. You're at the Iron Man. You're the you're junior in high school. You're one of the top juniors in the country. You made a big transition. Now you're a state runner up, but the tournament the is summer, still fledgling. The tournament's like still twenty or twenty four teams, right? Yeah, so, something like that. Uh, okay. But that summer. Uh, between my junior, my sophomore, my junior year, I went to Fargo. I took uh, third in Greco, second in the Fargo freestyle finals, lost to Jasmine Smith in the finals. So I finally started making, you know, I took second at state, second at Fargo. And now I'm like, I'm confident. I'm ready to go. And uh, so I draw first round at Ironman my junior year at 160. I draw Blair Academy. And I, again, I watched I, you kick the tire out of that guy. Oh my god! Yeah, he played that guy he, up. Yeah, he was like fifth place, but I was I wasn't taking any prisoners, right? And and I yeah I beat him up, put him in his back, pinned him, got that match done quick. So that was my first match. Okay. I mean, so the next one, we were all on Rockfin. So we can go to Double Leg Ninja on Rockfin, correct? Correct. Yeah. And we can watch all the matches you're you're gonna start talking about right now. Like yeah, we can watch you dismantle the Blair Academy guy round one ninety six Iron Man, right? Yeah, yeah. And he I, up, I, that's why I watched it. Yeah. He ended up he ended up placing right. Like I I saw the award stand. He ended up placing. He was good. Okay. Um, next. And well, just I mean, just a side note, right? And Blair is now is starting to become top team this night this year. Blair won their first national championship this year when I was a junior. Okay. So Walsh Jesuit won it the year before um, in 1995, uh, sorry, 96, and then Blair Academy ends up winning it in 97. Okay. And so they got a good team. So I, so I beat him first round. And then uh, second round, I had a kid from, I believe, Medina Highland. Not sure who it was. I couldn't catch the name. But, um, but yeah, second round quarterfinals, I had a kid from Medina Highland, and I won that match. You right? pinned him? Uh, no, I, I didn't pin him. It was, I think it was a little sloppy, but um, I, I scored a lot of points. Okay. And, uh, um, you know, that was, that was what I tried. I tried to score a lot, take down, kick him out, take down, kick him out. And uh, so I won that match. So now I'm up to weight classes, and uh, I have – I finally have somebody from Walsh Jesuit that I could get a piece of. So I'm in the semifinals now against a kid from Walsh Jesuit. Don't know his name. Don't remember. Was I it tried. Mitchell? It could have been. I don't. I, I again. I couldn't. I couldn't hear on the video. Okay. I forgot. I was going to text Theta if he remembered who the guy was, because um, I, I, I I'm still in contact with with, with Victor every once in a while, and uh, but it was the wildest, wildest 
match. Like, fight, hit, like, hand fighting, pushing out of bounds, pushing each other. Like, he gave up. This, the match was wild. I did not score a takedown. I did score a takedown. I shocked the kid. I shocked him. I took him down. He hit, came back up. Reaction time in the 90s must have been five seconds. Right? <laughs> he hits. It's really bad up, to watch some little videos. Yeah, he ends up, we end up, I get him down. He stands back up. Then I take him back down, but they call us out of bounds, but they call him for fleeing the mat. So my first point is fleeing the mat. Then I get like an unsportsmanlike conduct because he tries to kick me, I think, when I'm down. Um, then I get a couple stall calls. Uh, and uh, so I'm winning. I'm winning this match, which is just like they got all the Walsh people in this corner, all the St. Ed's in the corner. In the video, you got like little Haruki Nakamura. You can see it. him, right? I love and, it. Um, Yoshi's on your team at this point. Yeah, Yoshi's on my Yoshi's team. Yoshi's the weight, two weights, a couple weights below you, three weights below you. Two, he was 145. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, no, maybe he was. No, he was, uh, the year before, he was 40. I know that. So he was 45. Yeah, you're right. Because um, I think Gray was 40 at that year, Maynard. Okay. 35, 40. Okay. And so, uh, so yeah, so there's like 17 seconds left in this match, or maybe less than that, maybe like 12 seconds left. And we go out of bounds. I'm shooting this kid out of bounds, left and right, left and right. I'm blast doubling. We're going out of bounds. Blast double. He's just backing up, going out of bounds. And 17 seconds left. I'm winning by a point. I'm circling. Boom, stalling. First stalling call. We get back in the middle. Coaches are like, blast double, blast double, blast double. I'm like, nope, I'm just going to circle. I literally didn't leave the small circle. Boom, stalling call. Five seconds into it. Tied. Stalling call, one point. Tied. Goes into overtime. I could not believe I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? This kid didn't do nothing all match. I mean, he did get a takedown, but I'm like, this guy did like nothing all match. Tried Except to fist fight you. Tried to fist fight me for sure. Yeah. And uh, so we go into overtime. And again, I drive him out of bounds, drive him out of bounds. I think the third or fourth time I drive him out of bounds with double leg, they finally call him for stalling again, give me a point. And now he's trying to fight the officials when coaches are holding him It's a back. melee. It turns into a melee. Of course it does. It's a wall shot. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people. So that's the semifinals, that. right? Yeah, that was the semifinals. Okay, so you're in the finals as a junior at 160 pounds, 96 wall iron man, right? Uh, yes, 96. Who you got in the finals? Uh, so I, I have Ty Wilcox from Calvary Chapel. Okay. Which I knew, him, right? Like Fargo National Champ, two time California National or State Champ at this point. Just an absolute stud. Oklahoma State recruit. Wasn't close. <laughs> he put it on you. Yeah, he put it on me, man. He was good. Like, and we can I mean, watch that on, on we can watch the fight with Mitch. I think it's Mitchell from Walsh. Yeah. Wilcox. We can watch both those. We can watch all those matches, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Double leg engine. So, in honor of it being Iron Man week, you know, we're going to jump to next year, your senior year. You jump a bunch more weights, right? Yeah. Two more weight classes. One. So, you win the state tournament at 160 pounds as a junior. Yes. Blast double, I remember. You win the, you win the state. Who'd you wrestle? Like Trotwood Madison guy on the finals? I can't remember. A kid from down south, but uh, I think it's Vincent Gay. Yeah. Trotwood Madison. Yeah. Okay, you beat him in the – did you pin him? Uh, no, I just – I beat him up, though. Okay, so you're a you're state champ going into the Ironman. Usually, like, obviously it's the first big competition of the year. You jump up to what weight from 160? 189. <laughs> so you're a 189 pounder as a senior. Yeah, so – but I did it for our team, right? Like, so I said Walsh won it two years before – Blair Academy won their first national championship in 1997. And we had an all-star team at St. Ed's. And uh, I'm going to argue one of the greatest high school wrestling lineups in the history of high school wrestling lineups. I'm going to argue that I'm, I'm saying that I'm guessing I'm not going to get a ton of pushback from you. Right. I feel like it was one of the greatest teams of all time. And you got to correct me if I'm wrong. Was Mark Jean and Mason Leonard on the team, or was Mark Jean yeah. too young? No, both. Yeah, it was Mark Jean and Mason. Were on the team. They were, they were. Oh, hold on, hold on. 
Division One All-Americans, you got to help me out here. I think it was Michael Zicke. Yep. Mark Jane. Yep. Gray Maynard. Yep. Bertine. Two-time NCAA champ, Ryan Bertine. Yep. And um, myself. The, uh, uh, geez, uh, uh, and myself, that's it. Five. And you. So five, five yeah. D1 All-Americans on the team. The year before. An Olympian. Yeah. You're the Olympian. Yeah. And then Bertine's a two-time NCAA yeah. champion. The right? year before, though, um, the year before, and so we won the Ironman. The year I took second, we, came, we, we shocked everybody. We won the Ironman. Then. Okay. But when we went up to Blair, uh, so we went to the Easton Peberg duels to wrestle Blair, Easton, and Phillipsburg. Easton and Blair all dropped their kids away class from the Ironman, and Ed's kept everyone the same. And we got smoked by both of them. Okay. Like um, in that duel, me uh, Jamar Billman beat Gray Maynard. Like it was just th- there were some amazing matches. Like it's such a cool experience. But yeah, we got smoked that year. So like, um, but we had Yoshi that year. So that year, that my junior year, we had six eventual college all Americans on a wow. high school team. Wow. So you add all the guys I just said and Yoshi, you had six all Americans on the team. Yeah, six out of fourteen weight classes, right? And so but the next year the next year we were better because like, you know, Gray Gray was better, I was better. Um, you know, Mason and, and Mark were older. Um, you know, they were they were sophomores that year. They they won states that year. Um and then you had yeah. WWE superstar Nick Namath on the team. He was your one forty five, right? <laughs> Yeah, he was uh, he was around a twelve at NCAA's. Yes, and then I lost to Kinley that year. He was a seventy one putter. I lost to Kinley in the Medina finals in overtime. Yeah, and so uh, so that's the reason Kinley is the reason why I went up to one eighty nine. I was like, I'm not cutting weight. I'm not making one sixty. And I was like, if we're going to be the best team in the country, I was like, I'm confident enough that like I want Kinley to be one seventy one because to to win what we had to do against Blair and Easton and uh, Walsh and all those teams. Like I was like, Kenley's going to wrestle 71. He's too small for one sit 189. Uh, he was just a lot shorter than me. And so I was like, I'll, I'll bump past Kenley and, and I'll go wrestle 189. I mean, I weighed 180, you know, I was bulking up all summer. I didn't, you know, it's, I was okay with it. And uh, I was confident. So East Cleveland um, bulk job. That's what we're going to call you. Right, I drink a chocolate milkshake every night after dinner. Chocolate milkshake and some Lake Erie water. Yep. <laughs> that would have the opposite effect. You looked all like sickly and horrible. <laughs> you look, you look like sick. Okay, so you go up to eighty nine. It's a new weight. It's your first time wrestling these big gigantic guys. How does your senior year Walsh Ironman go? Yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously it was my first time wrestling competition, but like, you know, I had been wrestling with Orski and stuff like years before just hand fight yeah I could feel big guys um but uh yeah I mean my first round I, I had a local guy East Lake North uh I had one of the Dell guides like, I, I don't remember the first name but wait uh, Dell guides were they were Mayfield no one of the cousins oh was, one of the cousins uh, were okay so hold on yeah. for reference point to people Stipe Miocic he he was a state runner up for East Lake North, the school you're talking about, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so they were teammates. I mean, Stepe was probably 189 at, or 215 at that time. Yeah, if he would have been a freshman, was he? That maybe like a 2000 grad. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So Stepe, Stepe school, you have one of the Dell guides, and there, there's a bunch of Dell guides, like you said. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you have Dell guide. Did you put it on? Did you put it on Dell guide? Put it on him. Yeah. Okay. On the quarters. I think I pinned him. Okay. Next, who do you got? And then, uh, and then, uh, then second match, I think I had a kid from I can't I, I couldn't hear it, but I think I had a kid from Berea, which kind of shocks me that I had a kid from Berea. So you got two local Cleveland guys. Yeah. You got an East Sider and a West Sider. Yep. And so, okay, so for reference, there, Dustin Kilgore went to Berea High School, NCAA champ for Kent State, he did. right? And, okay, so you beat uh, a Berea I, guy, then who you got? Yeah, I, again, now I, I don't have a clue. Now you're in, like, the I semis. And I, yeah, in the semis. I think it's a Pennsylvania kid, some orange singlet. I don't even remember. I was trying to hear the name, but I couldn't remember. So we get, we've got that match on there. We can watch it, though. Somebody can identify him for us, right? Yes. Okay, so what'd you do to the PA guy in the semis? Pinned him. Pinned him. So you pinned everybody. You crushed everybody. 
Yeah, I had two. I had two pins, two pins, and I and I won like thirteen to seven or something like that. Okay, so going into the finals, I mean, I almost want a drum roll for this one, right? You have, <laughs> um, you have John Trench in the in the finals of the Ironman from he's from Parkland, right? Dude. Yeah, Parkland High School. Parkland High School, which is in Lehigh Valley, for people who don't know. Um, John Trench is. Okay, so for for reference point, you're wrestling him. Uh, is, are we a year older than Trench? Yeah. So Trench would have been a junior. You were a senior. John Trench was the runner up to Kale Sanderson for Kale Sanderson's fourth NCAA title. Right. Yep. No, I mean, yeah, no, that I'm I'm saying no, that it is right. But um, so yeah. Trench, <laughs> a, a a scrappy Lehigh Valley guy, mean, very mean. You guys are battling in the finals. He's a legend in Lehigh Valley. The dude's a stud, first off. Let's get that straight. He's a total killer. So you know you're up against a really good guy. You got smoked in the finals yeah. the year before. Now you got Trench in the finals. What, what's the thoughts going through your mind? And he's nationally ranked too, right? I mean, Yeah, yeah. He's one of the best guys in the country. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, in my mind, right, like, I never thought, like, I wasn't going to win. You know, like – you know, being at St. Ed's, they, they instill that in you. Like, no, you're here to win. And, uh, you know, I, I never thought in my mind, even though, like, I don't think I was always the best, like, technical wrestler, especially when I was young. You know, I was scrappy. I knew how to, I knew how to scramble and stuff. But I just knew mentally that I had an edge over everybody, right? And part of that was Tadaki. You know, Tadaki, you know, really taught me, strategies and tactics of the sport that not many kids in high school were able to have that level of understanding and so mentally I just believed in myself that uh, it, it didn't matter if I was undersized it didn't matter um, if I was not strong as the other person like I just was like I'm going to win and uh, that was my mindset so you got trends we're gonna watch this you ready yeah, I'm ready. Oh, I love it. I love it. I've never shared the screen here, so we're going to share the screen, and uh, we're going to watch this. Let me know. We're going to have to fix the volume and tweak it a little bit here, but if we need to edit anything out or if anything goes terribly wrong here, we'll have to figure it out. But here we go. John Trench, junior from Parkland High School, versus Andy Rovat, senior from St. Edward, 1997, Walsh Jesuit, Ironman Finals, 189 pounds. Uh, he's a Three or four time All American, I think he's a four time All American. So an NCA finalist as well. So we got yeah. Trench versus Robat. Here we go. I'm a, I'm pumped. I'm excited. Okay, so here we go. Boom. I'm sharing it. Can you see it? Yep. We're gonna go full screen. We'll have to mess with the volume here a little bit. Okay, so here we go. And we're gonna be in. Hey, this is the same gym. Where we're going to be at this weekend watching wrestling. I'm kind of pumped, man. I'm real pumped. So here we go. Young John Haffernan. Okay. You're in the green with the yellow headgear. He is in the black and red, right? Right. So Andy Rovat. Oh, man, you got the red Dave Schultz's on. Love it. Oh, Twister. Twister. Right. Nice. Shoot him off. Okay. <laughs> Shoot them off. We need bigger mats. They still need bigger mats. I know, right? High school is tough to watch. Such small mats. Friends, low single. Head slides to the outside. He cuts across double. Roll here. Man, he, that was a nice level change you had. I'm not going to lie. Really nice. <laughs> that was fast. Oh, man. You're trying to hip over. Oh, you're in a bad spot, Silent H. He's got you yeah, barred up. Either. It's 2 0 here, halfway through the first period. John Trench, 2 0, and Andy Robet here. Bar on the left side, half on the right. Yep, 40 seconds left. 
Oh man. You, you, that's good that you got a restart there. Yeah. Now we got a bloody nose. Oh yeah, that, I always have bloody noses. All right. I see the time. Thirty seconds left. Just to trip you backwards. You gonna try and sit the corner here and slide behind him? He's gonna. Well, I'm just top. trying to keep my balance. Like he, that was. You don't you're undersized here. He's a real 189. You're like 180 pounds, right? Yeah, he's a big kid. He's a massive <laughs> dude. So 10 seconds left. You're up and out. You get the escape. 2-1. Yeah. 2-1, end of the first period. 2-1 at the end of the first period. John Trench. All right, we're going to a disc flip. Apparently, it's your choice. You choose underneath. I don't quad pod. Start. Good, good hand I control. Good quad pod to your feet. Nice mat return. Kazoni out. Okay. 2-2. Two, two, we're tied. 145 left in the second. Rovat and Trench tied here. I don't hear your dad screaming, by the way. No, he definitely is. <laughs> I, think he, I think he specifically muted him. Okay, we're on the edge. Off the mat. Restart. 125 left. Fully double attempt. Off the mat. Did they just ding him for stalling? They did, yeah. They dinged him. Okay. So, 2-2. Two, two, second period. He has a stall call. He has a stall call. He takes another deep shot. Head stuck in the middle. Oh, that was nice. Yeah. Lucky lucky it's not the college out of bounds rules. <laughs> yeah. It would have been a six-pointer. <laughs> Shoving him to the edge here. Dude, he is an absolute horse. 50 seconds left. Double leg. Silent H. Another double leg. Almost slide by. Counterattack. Off the mat. Yeah. I mean, his ability to lower, lower his level was unreal. Did you guys wrestle in college? No, never. He was always up weight. 30 seconds Run left the... in the second. 2-2. Two, two. You're going to get him ding for stalling here. I can feel it. There it is. There it was. No, I... No, no, no stalling. They didn't call it? It's still 2-2. Yeah, they didn't call it. Um, we were on a university world team together. Oh, wow. But that, that, I, was at, I was at 163. He was at 211. That's so crazy. <laughs> I went down after college because I was little. Yeah, I, I almost had a takedown there on the edge. They called it out. Short time here left on the second. It's going to be his choice. Five seconds left. Dude. I, it, the stands might like, look like this this weekend because I don't think they released all the tickets because they because of COVID. No, they did. They opened it up. They did open it up. Yeah, I think a couple weeks ago they said they were opening it up. Okay. Don't be surprised if it does look like this though. Right. Sparse is what I would say. But I'm guessing if you're saying that, it's going to be packed. So three, he's got three two lead. Yeah. Third period here, one thirty six left. Yep. You win this match? Yeah. Oh, my God. Did you just gritty? Just a winner. I, mean, I, kept, I kept shooting him out of bounds. I think – did they just give me the point there? Um, they just I gave can't the see it. No. We're on the way. No, he's got three to two. Three to two. He's still winning. Yeah, I threw him out of bounds there. He's got some sick stars. Oh, my favorite, the Kendall Cross. A great pair of shoes. Now he's pushing. Those are literally probably my favorite shoes right there. It's a there. great shoe. You can buy a pair for like three grand. Oh, my goodness, right? Yeah, that's insane. So 55 seconds left. He's still winning three to two. Okay, tries to clear the arm. Double it to toes. Out of, out of bounds. And this might be – no, they still didn't give me a point yet. So two, two. Oh, he punches it up. No, you throw him off the mat. Still three, two, man. He's still winning. Yep. 
I Wait, shoot him out. What just happened? Did he just ding him for stalling? Not yet, but he was, I think, right there. Right there they just did because he backed yeah, out again. Yeah, threw his arms up. Yeah, so, I mean, I did take him out of bounds a lot. Um, so, yeah, so now it's 3-3, three, 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 short three, time. 3-3, three, and we're going to go to overtime, right? Yeah, I think it's overtime right now. I just saw a towel tapper. Yeah. But – Ten it? seconds it left. Oh! No, maybe it's oh! Oh! <laughs> maybe it go to overtime. That was sick, dude. <laughs> Boom, the body lock. Woo. Yeah, but th- yeah, so so it wasn't overtime. It was five seconds left, I think, in the match. That was sick, dude. Oh. I'm, I got to watch a replay. I got to watch a replay. <laughs> Sorry. Hold on, we're doing a replay. Here we go. Here we go. Short time, third period. Robat to the body. Body lock. I don't think he counted any near fall. Then you no, thought no it was over. Fall. It's not over. You were going to get up and celebrate. Oh, that was sick, <laughs> dude. Body lock for the win. You just Yeah, with short, short time lock. Night. That was awesome. I didn't know. The end of the, I, I didn't watch the match yet, as you can tell from my reaction. That was awesome, dude. Wow. Wow. And it was trench. Yeah, so I think he ended up – I think I was the last person to beat him. He ended up going undefeated the, the rest of his junior year, all of senior year of high school. He's pretty good. He's real yeah. good. Yeah. Um, when did he start wearing – he detached his retinas, I believe, and he had to start wearing the glasses, right? Yeah, it was either his freshman or sophomore year of college. It might have yeah. been his sophomore year of college. So he yeah, redshirted. Um, I didn't. So he graduated two years after me. Okay. So did he make the finals? Because he made so the he finals made, in well, 02. So that was his sophomore year. Sophomore year, yeah. And so he didn't make it again. I thought I, I thought he made the finals again. No, I believe that was the only time he made the finals. Really? I mean, he made the NCAA finals. Was pretty good. Yeah, real good. What were your NCA placements? Uh, so as a freshman uh, in college, I was eighth. And then sophomore year, I didn't place. And then junior year, I was fourth. And my senior year, I was seventh. Okay. Who were some of your round of 12 opponents? I love it. When you tell uh, them, I'm like, oh, my God, that's who you beat in the round of 12? Who'd you beat? Did you beat Mark Munoz one year? Yeah. Yeah. My, so my freshman year, I wrestled everybody ranked. I was, the, I was unseated. I beat the number eighth ranked guy, Nate Patrick, to qualify at Big, at big Tens. And then yeah, I go to the NCAAs. Illinois? Illinois, yeah. And yeah. so first round of NCAAs, I had the ninth ranked kid who was the returning All-American from Hofstra. Um, I, no, Navy. I had Gangaleski, who was a returning All-American from Navy. Okay. And then I had the ninth seed. So eighth seed, the ninth seed was a Hofstra kid. I beat him. Then I lost to Sanderson, who was the number one seed. And then I, after I lost Sanderson, then I had Munoz in the round of 12. Was Agam the one seed? Uh, Agam, no, Sanderson at that point was one seed. Sanderson was the one seed. Yeah. And so yeah, then I lost to was Sanderson. San, so Agam would have been the two. Yeah, Agam was the two. Agam was the and two, then, okay. And Munoz was the three. And then, so then I wrestled Munoz in the round of 12 after losing to Sanderson in the quarters. And I beat him in overtime and is in Penn State. And the corner of the arena was all Oklahoma State. And the mat was right there in the front. And I had a big lead. And I gave up the lead in the third period. And then I rope-a-doped him in the uh, overtime. You say you rope-a-doped him? Yeah, for sure. I roped him. Because I can't. You still all like, the sleep. No, he's just – we had been in this position a lot because he just moved so well. And I kept getting in a single like this, like a normal single, you're like this. A reverse, like a, like a back – like a back lock? Like a, like a yeah, back hook like, almost? Yeah, I don't know, I kept getting in a scramble position. I, I kept getting locked like this. And I'm like, what? And that's how he scored on me at the end of regulation to put it in overtime. He scored twice in there in the third period. And 
I felt him high leg over to get behind me. And I was like, oh, shit, he's going to do that again. And so I'm, again, overtime. I get in this reverse single. I'm holding his leg. He high legs over. And then I pop my head out and bring the leg up and come around. And, and I, so I rope a dope. To, you know, I, I played him. I love it. And, uh, you baited him. You baited him. For sure I baited him. I love well, it. Because I felt him. I made the correction in the match. And so I, he was the third seed. I beat him. Then I lost to Josh Van Doren from Lehigh, who was like the fifth seed. I lost to him after the round of 12. And then I lost to like the seventh seed, um, Greenfield from Central Michigan. Mike Greenfield beat you for seventh and eighth. Yeah. So I had the eight, nine, seven, eight, nine, one, three, five, and seven. Oh seed. my God. Your path was brutal. And you were a true freshman. True freshman. Oh my God. True. And then. So you went up, did you ever go up to 97? I forget. No, no. A lot of people did, though. After Sanderson won, a lot of people went up, like Thatcher and Spada. Um, Munoz went up that next year. Brad Veering went up. Did Munoz uh, win it the year he went up? Or did Veering win yeah, it? Veering yeah. won it. He won it. Uh, no, Munoz won it up. They both won it up. They both yeah. won it. Veering won it up back and back. Munoz won it up. And they were, they were, year, they were stacked back to back. Yeah, I think Munoz won it the next year, then Baring won it the following year. Yeah, because then Sanderson went up to 97. That was where he wrestled. Uh, 2002, he wrestled Trench in the finals. Were your matches with Sanderson, yeah. with, with Kale, uh, competitive? Yeah, I mean, decent, not really. Um, I t so, so that year at NCAAs, I took him down right away. Blast double, took him down, riding him, riding him, riding him. And uh, he ends up reversing me and rode me. And so the first period ended two to two. And then um, next period, he chose down. He, I was riding him. He reversed me again, put me to my back and pinned me. So not really close. But it was close. It was close until he <laughs> reversed you and pinned you. It was close until he reversed It was me close until he reversed you and pinned you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've had close matches with him other times, but uh, – but no, he was on, he was just on another level. He was like, in college was, wrestling. He was just he was so on, man. All the obviously 159 times in a row. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he was like, pretty good. You can't like you can't. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just something like being able to say I got to wrestle him. It's just something like. I mean, he's a legend, right? I yeah, hundred percent. I mean, there's nobody ever ever like him. You know, 159 and 0, rarely ever had a bad match. I mean, I mean, just think about like his, like he, he dominated Cormier, right? Like I mean, Cormier yeah. was a good wrestler. I mean, Cormier, I mean, Cormier combined the UFC titles at 205 and heavyweight. Right. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what else you need to. I don't know what else I need to tell you. <laughs> yeah, same, same and he dominated him in the NCAA finals. Um. In the Big 12 finals. Um, how, how, okay, this is a question. I, I just thought of this. This just came to me. I haven't even been like, I've been thinking about like watching these, the video with you like we just did. I, I'm really excited by how that finished, and that was awesome how you body locked him. But uh, compare Kale Sanderson to if you've wrestled Adam Saitiev or Buvisor Saitiev or Gasalev or whatever right. Russian the highest tier Russians that you've trained with or wrestled in competition. I know it's a totally different feel. Is he, right. what is his level compared to those guys' level? So, so I wrestled Adam Satia. I, I wrestled him at the world cup in Vladi Kavkaz in 07. Um, first period, I beat him six to one. Then I think I lost to him like two to one. And then I think I lost to him one zero, something like that. You got um, rope doped I, No, I, he just, it ended up being a fight. Dude, I, I, wrestled doing. First, I wrestled in the first period, and he, like, wrestling-wise, I beat him, and then he just turned it into a fight. Like, we literally just went boom, boom for four more minutes. That's crazy um, to me. And so, no, Adam Satia doesn't compare to Kikel. I wrestled him at the, at later on. Um, you didn't Romero. wrestle 2000 Adam Satia. You wrestled 2007 Adam Satia. Yeah. Big difference, um, right? You know, you, you acknowledge that. Yeah, big difference. But I wrestled, I wrestled Romero, and I wrestled the best Romero. Uh, you Romero. 2001. 
Yeah, so 99, Romero won Worlds. 2000, he took second at the Olympics. Uh, 2001, I wrestled him at the Pan American Championships. And uh, I lost to him five to three. But score said five to three. But I feel like, he, I feel if he really wanted to, he could have scored any time he wanted on me. Uh, he, he was slippery. He, like, so Kale Sanderson's movement was something I've never felt in my life. Like his up and down, side to side, in and out, like made you feel stupid. And Romero was on that level. He was just unbelievable. Well, he was a uh, he was a bronze medalist to him in in the in oh four. Right. He was a bronze medalist to, to Kale in 04. Romero never lost to Romero until the Olympics. Romero beat Kale a few times. Yes. He beat him at the Titan Games. He beat him at Pan American uh, Games, I think, the, in 2003. Um, maybe another time he beat him. But, yeah, um, I wrestled Sajidov, right? Like, against Sajid, Sajid, Sajidov. Like, yeah, so I had a – at Uregan, I had a close match with Sajidov. Um, so so I, I, I told you I went down when I was on the University World Team. I wrestled 163. Trends was 211. Um and uh, so he, uh, so then I went up after I went that they when they changed the weight classes, I, I couldn't keep making 162. So I ended up going up in 2004. And within a two week period, so I went up at the New York Athletic Club tournament during Christmas time because I couldn't make weight. So I go up. Then I go to Manitoba in Canada. I wrestled Kale Sanderson in the finals. Then right after that, we fly to Uregan, and uh, I, was, I was beating Kale something like six to four with 15 seconds left, and I didn't know how to ice matches, and he shoots in. I, I tried to body lock him. I throw myself to my back, pin myself. And uh, then we go to Uregan, and this is 2004 Uregan, year before Kale and Sajida were first, second in world that's when they had the three pool systems, right? You had three people, you had to wrestle two people in your pool, winners of the pool go out into the round of eight. And uh, so I, I'm in a pool with Kale Sanderson and um, Sajidov. But the, the Russians were like, that was your want pool? This. That's my pool, right? Luck of the draw. So they pull Sanderson out. Put we're going to call that unluck of the draw. Right. So they pull Sanderson out, put him on the other side of the bracket. They switch him with the Chinese guy. I, I pin the Chinese guy. And so now I'm wrestling Sajidov. And I was beating him 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, and he takes me down with like 15 seconds left to win the match. And, uh, but then I wrestled him the next week in a duel in uh, Yakuts uh, up in Yakutia near Alaska. Siberia. It's freaking yeah. Siberia. Right. And so Above that's the that Arctic here. circle where you're talking. You're a maniac. Above I love that. it. It's like, it's like minus 50. But he. Uh, All he, the buildings are made out of, uh, out of block, aren't they? Yeah. Not, there's nothing wood because it'll like shatter from the cold. No, no. They have, they have wood houses too. But, but a lot of it is blocks. Most but of it's he, block. Uh, yeah. He, he smoked me in that next match. But he is. He's good, right? Um, he, he was on another level. Uh, but the only other person that I can say that was on Kale Sanderson's level was uh, George Katoya, uh, 2007 world champ. And I wrestled him at the 06 um, Chicago Cup. And we exchanged a lot of blows, but he – I, 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 I was there, blows. by the way. It was, it was at Northwestern. Yeah. I was so I Blizzard that North night. North I was there. Yeah, I scored the most points on him in the world year, I believe. Uh, but he still smoked me. He he went on and he killed everybody at the world championship. Like so, you're beat, saying Katoyev? You're putting Katoyev on Kale Sanderson level, and you're putting Yo Romero on his level. You're not even putting at, well, 2007 Adam Satiev on that level. No, I wouldn't put him on that level. But Katoyev and um, Romero are definitely the two guys I'd put on Sanderson's level. That's, I mean, because I think like, and most people will say like, well, Katoya never did anything, but I, I, so I think well, he's, he's, a world champ. Lost. he's a world champ. He's a world champ. But I think he purposely lost at the Olympics, right? He's Osation, and in 08, they, 
Russia invaded South Ossetia and he had family there. And from what I hear is they were like, look, like you're Ossetian first, you're Russian second. And so he had Georgia match. And so I honestly, from what I believe and what I heard is that he purposely lost to the Georgian in the round one. Minnesota goes on to win the Olympics. Kotoyev goes on to win bronze. But having that experience of Russia invading your home, your, your family's homeland of South Ossetia, and then the fact that he dominated so much in 2007, I think he got like, he, he just thought that he didn't need to train that much. And then he kind of went down. But and he went up and he was placing medals like seven years later at 96 kilos. Wasn't the same Georgie Katoya, let's be real. But as, as a level, his 2007 run, and, and just I trained with him all of 2009, 2010, 11, um, in that era. And I've never wrestled somebody where you're like, he'd be like, we go. And I was like, every, like once a week he would come up to me and I would just be like, I'm not going to do anything in today's practice. Like, I'm like, I'm not going to score a point. I'm lucky if I score a point, like I'm going to do my best to score a point. Like every situation we would have to wrestle live in, like the hardest situation I've ever had, we would wrestle the matches. It was like, every time I shot a double leg, it was like hitting a brick wall. I couldn't budge him. And it was just absolutely an ass beating every single, every week I got my ass kicked by Georgia Katoya and I absolutely hated it. And the, my favorite day, I'd be like, I'd be like, all right, I'm going with you. And it'd be uh, Ibrahim Adoltov, two time world champ, <laughs> Olympic medalist, like five, five or six time world Olympic medalist. And I would love to go with him because him and I, when we wrestled matches, we'd score 20 points total, like 25 points. We'd go back and forth, back and forth. It was fun. I could score on him. He scores on me. And we were real competitive. But Katoyev was just like, I wasn't even, I, I couldn't even sniff a point on him. That's, that's insane to me because you're going toe-to-toe with Sanderson. You went toe-to-toe with Yoel, at least Romero, at least what the score said, right? 5-3. You're going toe to toe with these guys who you're putting on, but Katoya, you can't sniff. You can't even. You got nothing. I mean, he's nothing. skunking you every time out. He's mauling you. Right. The that only blows my mind. I I, yeah. The only other person I wish I could judge was uh, who Vice or Saitia? I wish I could. No, I would. So I wrestled Yazdani. Um, big so Yazdani. Big Yazdani. And so I wrestled Big as Donnie, and I wish I could. I wish I could judge him, but uh, we were in. So in 2007, the year of that, I, so I was returning number one. 2007, I'm at the World Cup, and the World Cup is like 12 days before the U.S. Open in Krasnyarsk, and they only took the number one guys. And so we traveled 12 time zones from the East Coast to Krasnyarsk, weigh in, wrestle two days at the World Cup get on a plane, fly back home, like three or four days later, fly to Vegas, weigh in, wrestle at the US Open. And that year, uh, I lost to Joe Williams in the US Open as semis. But at the, at the, your 74 weekend, kilos? No, up away, 84. 84. That was his first year. That was the year he made the world team. And so, but at the World Cup, 12 days, 10 days, at, you know, 12 days, 10 days before the US Open, I'm warming up with Pritzlaff, right? So we go through our whole warm-up routine. You know, we always warmed up together, um, being two overtime guys. And the last thing we did was three one-minute go, hand fighting, just to get the blood flowing in our arms, push, pull, you know, snap. And we're doing this on our own, right? We have a timer going, push, pull, snap, boom, boom, boom. I got my mouthpiece in. I'm ready to go. Boom, boom. I'm pushing, I'm pulling. I snap him down. He bites because I fake and snap him. He bites. He falls down. He comes back up. And when he comes back up, he catches me under my chin, and I fall flat, knocked out. I was out cold. Got to be kidding like, me. The coaches are getting ready, like, down in, in the arena in, at the Uregan. And uh, so no coaches are up there. And Donnie's, like, looking at me. He goes, like, when I finally wake up, he's like, you're all right, man. Like, you just got knocked out. And I was like, well, fuck it. Like, don't, let's not say anything. Um I'm the only guy here. I didn't come here to not wrestle. And so we have Iran first match. I got Yazdani 
who um, – that was 2007. He ended up losing to Katoyev in the finals that year. And uh, he was still relatively young, but he was really good. And, you, you, okay, uh, so, so people don't know. Don't there's, there's, don't two, there's, there's three Yazdanis who have been U.S. national – sorry, Iranian national team members – who rep- represented them and medaled in the World Championships Olympics, right? So yeah. we're talking about the biggest, oldest Reza Yazdani, yeah. correct? Yeah. So we're talking about Reza Yazdani. He's an Olympian in 2012. World Double champion. Well, he's a world champion. He's an Olympian in 2012, the year Varner won the weight. Right. Um, and then he he's – both ACLs he had, that year. What's that? He tore both of his ACLs in that Yeah, match. in the match with Gadisov. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So that's – we're talking about Reza Yazdani. We're not talking about uh, Yazdani Tarati, which is uh, – what is what's his first name? Uh, the guy David Taylor just beat for Olympic gold medal. Ha- yeah. Hassan Yazdani Tarati, right? Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah, Hassan Yazdani Tarati. So that is the second Yazdani, the one that David right. Taylor beat for the Olympic gold medal, who's an Olympic gold medal since 2016. One? And then there's a small there, – yeah, there's a smaller one, I believe. Okay. There's a third. There is a third Yazdani. Yeah, I I think I got that right. No, there is. There's I'm another sure. Yazdani. Know, I'm know, like, where where are all these Yazdanis the big, coming from? Yeah, um, but I mean, the big Yazdani was Yazdani the Great before they renamed the younger one Yazdani. The <laughs> so they're cousins, the, I believe. Cousins. Are they? He's yeah. The, they call them like the Puma of Jaguar or whatever. Called. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm actually looking it up right now as we're talking because, like, I'm actually um, really curious right now. Yeah, there's Hassan, there's Reza. Yes, it is. Yes, there's a third one. There's uh, Amir, Amir Yazdani. He is uh, 65 kilo. Um, Yeah, so it's the third one is the small one. It's smallest Yazdani is uh, Amir. So they got three of them. I am right about that. Um, Hassan Yazdani Charati is the middle and he's the best as of right now. Right. So, and then Reza, like we said, is a world champion and an Olympian blew both. He's of got five, five or six world medals. Yeah. And he's real. The problem with him is he's so short. He's, he's like so short and he's seven. super explosive. What's so that? Explosive. He's How like tall? five, seven, two, like five eight, maybe five seven. He's five not eight, that tall, 11. dude. He's t- he's shorter than that. He's got to be. I don't. Th- I mean, but he's tiny. But I don't think he's shorter than five seven. He's he is little, dude. But his legs. Oh my god! I've never seen a guy with bigger quads in my life. Right. They hang over his knee. <laughs> okay. I got a couple I wish million I dollars. I don't. I don't remember that match. I was out cold. Did he beat? He put it on you. Oh, yeah, I walked off the mat, and Kevin Jackson and Bormat, they were coaching the team. They were like, what in the hell is going on? You're wrestling like you're, like, in grade school. Like, you're – I was like, guys, I didn't want to tell you before the match, but I got knocked out at the, in the warm-ups with Donnie. He caught me under my chin. They're like, well, why didn't you tell us? I was like, what were you guys going to do? Forfeit? I, wasn't, I said, my pride, I wasn't quitting. I don't care if I have a concussion. I'm going out there. Like, I didn't care. Stupid okay. now, knowing knowing concussions and what they could well, do. Yeah, I was just gonna say in hindsight now, Andy, you probably no, pull yourself. Yeah, but no, yeah, but back then they didn't tell you the the I bad know. parts of concussion. You know, like they didn't. They still let me wrestle ten days later at the U.S. Open. I I was like I was walking quicksand. I was like at the U.S. Open, like, boy, Matt, I don't understand why I'm so slow. I don't get it. Like it's like yeah, your brain's not. Firing, Andy. That's why you your, lost. your brain just went against your skull. That's what happened. You bounced it off your skull. That's what happened. Right. Okay. And that I ended up third though that year. So I'm so proud of that. You but are I was the most wreck. I was a wreck. We're way over time. Are you good? Because listen, I found out like I did this thing to Anthony Ashnault where I didn't respect his time. Felt like no, a horrible good. person. Do we got time for some some more questions? Yeah, for sure. I'm good. 